Still Bruno looking for some open space, going for the finesse shot. Oh my god, Bruno Fernandes. What has just happened here? And Marcus Rashford has broken through. Big chance. Rashford shoots. Rashford scores. We're back in it, guys. Okay, how are we already in the month of December in this series? We've been making a lot of progress. This episode's big because we're going to wrap up our Champions League group with that game against PSG. We've got Spurs away in the Prem. Should be exciting and very soon we will be in the January transfer window. Big episode boys, we're going to be talking transfers, Champions League, Premier League action. Should be fun. If you're enjoying this career mode, drop a like on the video that helps the channel grow. Subscribe if you are new around here and let's kick things off. Press conference to kick off the episode. Get involved by dropping in your questions in the comments section. Section below. First one of the day, give Mason Greenwood more playing time. He grows really well and in my career mode, he's gone up to a 94 overall. That's actually mad. But of course, in this series, the situation is a bit different with Greenwood. He picked up a three-month long injury. He's only just recovered and because of that, we've barely played him all season long. His sharpness is super low at the moment and he can't really give his best on the pitch. So, it's gonna take some time for Greenwood to become an important player in our setup but hopefully that'll happen soon and now that he's back to full fitness we're gonna start using him more and more and hopefully he'll gain that sharpness and will fulfill his potential for us in this series. Next up sign Jack Grealish as a backup during the next transfer window and this is gonna be the title of the episode. Should we sign Jack Grealish because I looked at this signing I know I signed him in last year's Man United career mode but this is a player I think that could really help out the team. If you look at our setup, we don't have a backup for Bruno Fernandes. I mean, Van der Beek could play there, but we don't really have that backup cam. Jack Grealish not only provides us depth in that cam position, but he can also play as a left winger. And our only true left winger in the team is Marcus Rashford. So Grealish could prove to be a fantastic signing for us. At the moment, he's playing his trade at Roma. We're definitely going to scout him, get to know more about him. And in January, we could try and make this happen. Let me know in the comments section your early opinions on a signing like this. I would love to make it happen. But of course, since I signed him last year, I'm kind of not sure if I should do it again or not. But the thing with Grealish is we didn't really use him all that much in my Man United career mode previously. So I don't mind trying to go again with him in this series. Let me know your early thoughts on this. One thing that's for sure, there's no denying the quality he's got. Next up, you're in the month of December. What are you going to do about Cavani's contract? If I can be real, guys, I think I'm going to just let his contract expire. I feel no need to renew his contract. Next season, we're probably going to look for another striker to, you know, compete with Anthony Martial. Cavani is going to have his last season here for Man United. It's just the smart thing to do. He's already going down in his overall. And if I can sell him in January and a good offer comes in, which probably won't, I might consider it, guys. I don't know, but I don't plan on renewing Cavani for another season. That is kind of my outlook on him. Now, don't get me wrong. Cavani has been good for us with seven goals in 17 games, but we definitely need something better next season. So, yeah, no point in renewing his contract. With that press conference done, let's keep pushing. It's Bruno Fernandes who picks up the Player of the Episode award. Can't say I'm surprised because last episode, he scored an absolute screamer. And the amount of assists he pulls for us is crazy. 15 assists already for him this season. He is just unbelievable. Ever since we've given him the armband, he's taken his game to another level as he picks up the Player of the Episode award. Okay, now today's episode's challenge is going to be a fun one. Play with a different formation in every single match. And if I don't complete this challenge, if I don't go for a different formation in every game that we play, um, I'm going to have to use a 5 at the back formation for the next episode. Yikes, this is going to be interesting. So every game in this episode, we're going to give a different formation a go. This should be interesting. We're starting the episode off with some Premier League action as Man United take on Wolves. Now, if you remember, last episode, we took the L to Everton and I want to get back to winning ways and keep my spot at the top of the league. But we're playing Wolves at the Molino. They're one of my bogey teams in the Prem, so this is going to be an interesting one. Since we had that Champions League game against Leipzig, I think a few days ago, I'm forced to rest a lot of our players, and also I need to try a new formation for this game. So I'm thinking we run a 4-4-2 and play Greenwood and Cavani up top, Rashford on the left, Dan James on the right. We've got Scott McTominay and Fred in midfield. It's an interesting formation and an interesting lineup. I had to rotate the team, especially since we've got Spurs in a few days. So 
this is how we're gonna run at the squad also we got to change our captain i feel like with the players we've got marcus rashford should have the armband that's how things are gonna go this is our team a new formation for this game of 4-4-2 Let's see how effective it is against Wolves' five at the back. Fred and McDominay, I think, are probably the best suited midfielders if you're using a 4-4-2 with the players we've got in the team. So, big chance for them, man. We have overlooked Fred so far in this series. The same can be said for McDominay. Let's see how they play here at Wolves. That Everton defeat that we took in the last episode was a painful one. I desperately want to get back to winning ways. And let's hope we can also see something from Mason Greenwood. I've been waiting to see him in action. Big moment for him as well. Not having that cam in a 4-4-2 is a bit difficult to deal with because I'm so used to having Bruno in the hole creating stuff for me. So I don't know how that's going to work. Our strikers will need to fill that gap. It's going to be tough to see if they can do so. But here's Cavani though. First chance. Now Mason. Lovely pass back to Cavani. Early chance for us to score. Shot gets blocked. But Greenwood Cavani looking decent. Would love a goal here from Rashford. There's the reverse Elastico, space to shoot, goes for goal, forces Patricio to make a big save there. That probably should have been a goal from that position. You'd bet your money on Rashford to score, but hey, the keeper makes a good save. Oh my god, look at the position we've got ourselves a free kick from. It is going to be Marcus Rashford. The question is, can he get this one up and under? I, I think I have an idea for the free kick technique I want to go with. But let's see if Rashford can put this in. It looks decent. It looks decent from Marcus. That is stunning from Rashford. 1-0 up against Wolves. I've scored my first free kick of this series. Rashford donning the armband for this one. And he steps up like how a captain should. Leading by example, Marcus Rashford with a stunning free kick. Rui Patricio came nowhere near it as Manchester United have the lead against Wolves. Have a look at that. That, that, that was kind of a knuckleball, not really, but it was just a sublime free kick from Marcus as Man United make it 1-0. Things you do love to see. Podens looking inside for Tendonka. Big chance for Wolves, but we saw a big block coming in there from Eric Bailly, who hasn't really had much opportunities this season. He's getting a chance to, you know, step up here. That's some good defending right there. Fred sees Mason Greenwood. That's a good first touch. Now Cavani. He's opened up space well. Cavani goes near post and of course he's going to score that. It is in Cavani in front of goal is lethal. I'm not too sure about that celebration. But regardless, Manchester United make it 2-0 here against Wolves. And I'm surprised. We're using a brand new formation without even Bruno in the team. Without a cam. And we're still delivering here against Wolves away from home. Commendable guys, I think that's commendable. 2-0 up Man United. Not gonna lie, it's been all Wolves since we made it 2-0. Chance here for them with Raul Jimenez. Looks for Dendonka. Dangerous, but Juan Bisaka read the danger and sorted us out really well. As I see, Marcus Rashford in acres of space and we know how effective it can be when he's given the time and space to attack like that. Rashford 1v1. That is way too easy for Marcus. What a finish. He scores his second of the game. Giving him the armband has really helped his game be taken to the next level, I suppose. McDominay grabs the assist for that one with a lovely pass from deep, but it was all about Rashford. He just slowed the game down. He knew what he had to do. Placed the ball, top right corner. Rashford with another sensational goal as Man United have wrapped things up, making it 3-0. Wait, what? We lit... I'm confused. Since when did, when did Dendonka be become like a lethal finisher? I didn't expect anything to come from that attack, but oh well, it's, it's happened. That's left me a bit confused, because I didn't expect Dendonka, who's kind of like a CDM slash centre-back, to bang a finish like that. Well, they get themselves a goal back out of nowhere, but I think the game is still done. And there you have it, full-time against Wolves. At the Molyneux, we've picked up a crucial win, three points in the bag, and that should keep us at the top of the league. What a performance. And we used a different formation as well, so can't complain. You know what, guys? The 4-4-2 has my seal of approval. Loved using this formation. Maybe we even consider it for some games in certain situations at some point. But yeah, really enjoyed using this. Okay, didn't realize that it's first versus second in the Premier League. We're up against Mourinho Spurs. And winner of this game basically stays top of the league. That's mental. It's Tottenham versus Manchester United. We're playing them away at the new Spurs Stadium and this is going to be a key game in the title race if we can get a win here we will actually have what a five or a yeah a five point advantage over Spurs at this stage of the season how crazy would that be and also how crazy is it that Man City aren't even in the title race they're 10th in the Premier League this makes no sense but 
on the other hand, this might be the season with City not having the best of fortunes, we can win the league. Less competition this season for us, this might be it, we've got a push and we need to get a result here. Is the squad deep enough for you to sustain your title challenge? I mean, we'll have a go, but that's a very good question. With Pogba leaving, we'll have a big void to fill as well. It's going to be interesting if this team has got what it takes to win at the Premier League in the first season itself. Okay, guys, I think I've played it very smart by saving my main formation for this big Premier League game against Spurs away. We're going to be using the 4-2-3-1 in this game. Martial, Bruno, Van der Beek, Oyarzabal all start. They're all back in the team for this one. This is going to be huge. Now, looking at Mourinho, Spurs, Kane, Son... Lo Celso, they've got Alderweireld, Alaba as well, a player I wanted to sign. They've got a good team, man. They've got Gareth Bale as well. This is going to be big for the series. If we win here, we go five points clear at the top. And that could prove to be huge in this title race. Absolutely massive game in the Premier League, guys. We can't underestimate how big this is. We've got Toby Alderweireld walking out of the team bus. There's Bruno in the suit with his suitcase and all. I'm ready for this. Guys, I swear this game is so stupid, honestly. Like, why doesn't the game automatically detect and solve the problem for a kit clash? Could have just given me the red kits by default, man. I'm gonna restart the game now because this is stupid. Here we go, I've got the kit situation sorted. We're wearing the red jersey, the home kit. Much better now. I was so frustrated seeing that again. I don't know why EA changed the way how kits are selected in career mode this year because what they've done is f frankly speaking stupid. Son has already gotten in behind our defense. What are we doing here? Hyungman Son looks for Harry Kane inside. Kane with the heel to heel. Still Kane. He's taking it wide. Brings it back inside. Looks for Son here. And that's good defending right there from Juan Bissaka. But early danger coming from Spurs. Sissoko looks inside for Solo Celso. And now it's Kane. Kane with a bit of space. That's good defending from Lindelof. So far in these first 15 or so minutes. It's been all Spurs and I do not like it one bit. Hyungman Son has been a pain in the bum, guys, in this game. Because he is just so quick. Look at him getting behind the defense. I'm sure he's onside as well. Hyungman Son on the ball. Brings it inside. Alex Telles had us covered there. What am, what am I doing? Get it away. Oh, thank God for that. I overplayed it quite a bit, but it worked out well. But as I said, it's been all Spurs so far. There's a reason they're second in the Prem, just behind us. Lo Celso on the charge with a bit of space. Good defending yet again. We've defended fairly well in this game. But going forward, we've literally had nothing. Another good challenge coming in from Upamecano. Going forward, we've got to be better. Looks inside for Los Celso. That is a good pass. And now it's Gareth Bale on the attack here. Alex Telles trying to block him. Can't, but De Gea makes a big save there. Spurs are, are, Spurs are literally all over us, guys. And I'm finding it extremely difficult just to even keep possession. Los Celso on the charge again. Looks for Kane. It's over. We're going to concede. There you go. Spurs make it 1-0. They've been just way too good for us. I've just... Been unable to do anything, we can't get the ball off them. They're creating chance after chance, and deservedly so, they've taken the lead. We need to fix up, change some things, because clearly what we're doing right now just isn't working. Hyungman Son on the ball, and he's just way too quick, man. Hyungman Son, chance for him to bring it inside, but Upamecano deals with it again really well. It's, it's been a good defensive performance, even though we've conceded that one goal. I think overall we've defended well, but going forwards... There's literally been nothing, but this might be the chance that could change everything. It is Oyarzabal on the attack, taking it wide, but again, brilliant defending from Spurs. It's been a tough half, guys. We're playing a very good team, and in the second half, things need to change. As crazy as it sounds, I, I kind of feel like we need something else in that midfield. And I think Fred might just be it. I thought he was really good in that last game. Let's bring him on for Paul Pogba, because I feel like Pogba is just getting overrun in midfield. He's just... Way too attack-minded, and that's not helping us out at, at all. So, we're going to try this out. Ah, the movement is lacking, so we're just going to be patient here. Wan Bisaka looks for Oyarzabal. Back now for Van Der Beek. This is good football. This is brilliant football. Martial now shoots, and we're back in it, guys. Out of nowhere. That might actually be one of our first opportunities of the game. We played it so well down that right flank, being super patient. Finally, when we got the ball towards Martial, he knew what he had to do. Slotted it home calmly past the goalkeeper as Manchester United make it 1-1. This is, I feel, undeserved. Definitely against the run of play. In the second half, we've started off really well. And it's 1-1. And honestly, I feel like we might be able to push towards the win here if we can just stay calm. And just keep doing what we're doing so far in the second half. We're a completely different team now in the second half as it's Marcus Rashford bringing it inside. Going for that finesse shot. 
and almost scoring a similar goal to what he scored in that previous game. Rashford looks to have come alive now for us. Fred has made a big impact in the midfield and now Lucas Mora comes on for Gareth Bale. They've got a lot of pace now. Back inside for Kane. Oh, that's good defending from one Bisaka. I think he has saved us a goal there with that interception. Solid stuff from him. As on the break, we could do something with Fred. He's having the game of his life right now. Still Fred. What a pass for Martial. And now it's Mikel Oyarzabal. This has to be a goal. Anthony Martial has scored yet again. What a counter-attack from Manchester United. And we've made it 2-1. Literally out of nowhere. On the other end of the pitch, we were about to concede if not for that one Bisaka interception. Then Fred drove the ball forward, found Martial. The link-up play with Oyarzabal was sensational. And then Man United now lead 2-1. What a comeback from us in this second half, guys. It's incredible. We're leading, and let's hope we can keep it that way. Let's make another change, guys. I think I'm going to bring on Scott McTominay for the rest of this game. Just, you know, give that midfield more strength and physicality. We'll also bring on Dan James for Yarzabal, just for that added pace. Oh, here we go on the break with Marcus, and look at Dan James making a run here. Dan James, just off the bench, is through on goal. Dan James here with a big chance, sliding this one past the keeper. It's sensational from the Welshman. In this second half, we've completely murdered Spurs. Literally that. Three goals and three goals literally on the break as well. What a finish from Dan James. That oozed class, man. Honestly, just slided it past the goalkeeper. A deft touch. No chance for him. Spurs have really missed two goloris in this one. I must say that as we make it 3-1. What a comeback from Man United, guys. This might be... One of our best second half performances in this series. I mean, it has to. Oh, Anthony Martial has broken through here. Still, Martial keeps it on and he goes for goal and he scores. Guys, how have we turned this game around so easily? It's 4-1 Manchester United. It's humiliation for Spurs. I remember in real life, the scoreline was the other way around. But here, we've just, we've just taken our game to the next level. And dare I say it, bringing on Fred at halftime gave our midfield... A different dimension and that changed the game for us I'm not gonna lie and well we're leading 4-1 now what a second half performance we've completely dispatched Spurs and with this win guys Man United remain the top of English football number one in the Premier League at the moment and I didn't even realize that it was a hat-trick for Anthony Martial he's had an underwhelming recent few episodes but now he's back at his very best Good to see him take home the match ball. Let's go, guys. Manchester United are top of the Premier League. The fight now is with Liverpool as they're just a point behind us. But I think I'm happy with the position we're in right now. 37 points, one above Liverpool, three above Leicester, who even in this series find themselves in the top four, which is a bit mad. But Spurs, with that one defeat, have dropped down to fifth. Just goes to show how close the Premier League title race is right now. So far this episode, at least Premier League-wise, it's just been perfect. I mean, we've won both our games, we're top of the league. But now, we move on to the Champions League, where things could go wrong for us. We lost both our games to Basak Sahid because of that. If we lose our next game to PSG and Basak Sahid win, we'll be out of the Champions League. We need a win or even a draw against PSG at home, which I think is possible. If we get that done, we will be through to the next round of the Champions League as group winners. And we know how crucial that is. So let's give it our all. Let's give it a go, guys. There's nothing much to lose. I want to try it out. A five at the back formation, guys. And with that, we complete our objective and we don't have to, of course, uh, do the four feet. So that's awesome. And this is the lineup I've gone for. I'm starting both Pogba and Cavani for different reasons. Cavani playing against this former team, Pogba, of course, um, he's joining PSG, playing against this future team, so should be interesting. Rashford, Oyarzabal start as well. Five at the back. I'm very eager to see how this turns out. That's the PSG team. They, they're not playing Neymar, which is interesting for such a big game, but they've got Mbappe. Let's get into it. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I am using a five at the back formation, but already we might be through on goal. Bruno Fernandes dinks this past the keeper and he scored. Well, we're 1-0 up. We've done the hard part with this formation, which is to score. It's Bruno Fernandes. I mean, who else but Bruno Fernandes? Literally walked past Presnel Kimpembe there. Ding the keeper. And we're 1-0 up. And now with this formation, all we've got to do is sit back and relax. And try and hit PSG on the break. I think we can do that now. First game using the 5 at the back formation ever on this channel. And we might be getting a famous win over PSG in the Champions League. Let's get it done. Oh, oh, what, 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 what? Guys, how is this even a thing? 
PSG have just done that in the Champions League. I am seriously dumbfounded. I have no idea what Kalo Navas has just done. We've pressed incredibly high. He got the ball there. And 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 he I think glitched for a minute there. I think he glitched for a minute and he couldn't move. And did he have like a seizure or something? I don't know what on earth was that. Cavani slid in, pressed and scored. That is one of the weirdest moments I've seen. Huge goalkeeping mistake from Kalo Navas. And with that, we're 2-0 up. I'm going to just jump this in because I feel it's over. PSG feel like they're not in the mood for this one. Let's just sim this game and get it out of the way. Because what on earth have I witnessed with that mistake? That's mental. We've actually made it 3-0 now. This is getting out of hand. No Neymar and PSG are just... An average team, I guess, but what on earth is that? You know what? We might just try and, you know, make substitutions and, you know, keep the squad rotated. I'll bring off Bruno Fernandes and put on a McTominay in the team. We'll also bring on Dan James for Rashford. Why not? And maybe even uh, Eric Bai for Pamecano, because PSG have just got slapped here silly against a five at the back Man United setup. I don't know how this is even working. Mbappe gets one goal back for PSG, but at this point, it's just too late. 3-1 is the final result. We've beaten PSG yet again in this series, and with that, we top our Champions League group. Wow, Cristiano Ronaldo wins the Ballon d'Or. That's a surprise. I'm, I'm really surprised. How has that happened? I expected Lewandowski, but it's Cristiano Ronaldo who takes home the Ballon d'Or. Fair enough, he still got it. Maybe at some point in this series, you know, we, we do it again. We bring back Cristiano Ronaldo. We'll see. PSG have been let off in this group because Basak Sahir picked up a draw. And because of that, PSG are through to the next round of the Champions League. Man United and PSG through. We're just going to quick sim this game against Newcastle and hopefully pick up a win. By the way, the formation thing doesn't apply for games that we just quick sim because... I don't want to waste time, you know, changing the formation and all in this instance. But 3-1 against Newcastle, Rashford, Bruno and one bissaka with the goals, another win in the Prem. So we're ending off the episode, top of the league in the Prem with that win over Newcastle. We keep our spot intact, but it's so tight at the top. Just, what, six points separating first from fourth? It's mental. Now, player of the episode is a bit difficult. We could go for Martial, who scored a hat-trick in this episode. I thought Bruno was once again great. But, you know, hat-trick hero, Anthony Martial, it probably should be him. Rashford had a great episode as well, so it's actually tough deciding who wins player of the episode. You guys can make that call. Very soon, we're going to have the Champions League draw, and you guys will be finding out who we'll be up against in the round of 16. But next episode, we'll be getting done with the month of December. We'll be in January, and maybe some transfers to go with that. So, should be exciting in this series. Drop a like, though, if you're enjoying this career mode. Subscribe if you're new around here, and well, I'll catch you all next time.